In a world chasing billion dollar fighters, one small Nordic jet quietly walked into Canada and outperformed almost everything thrown at it. No announcements, no media, no political noise, just a cold morning, a silent runway, and a Swedish fighter that most experts never took seriously. Yet by the end of those flights, Canada's own pilots came back with a verdict no one expected to hear. Gripen E wasn't just meeting expectations. So ain't er we John Burstensha. For decades, Canada looked west for its fighters, American design, American doctrine, American systems, that was the norm, and honestly, most pilots assume nothing else could compete. After all, the United States had the F-35, the jet the world was supposed to trust. The aircraft built on a mountain of promises, hype, politics, and money. Lots of money. But as global tensions grew, as Arctic missions became harsher, as budgets refused to behave, Canada started asking a simple question. Is there something smarter out there? That question led north, to Sweden, a country of barely 10 million people, with winners as unforgiving as Canada's, and engineers who believe that brilliance doesn't need a trillion dollar price tag. While superpowers spent fortunes chasing stealth perfection, Sweden quietly worked on a different philosophy build a jet that wins by being clever, adaptable, unbreakable, and easy to trust. That jet was Gripen E, and Canada wanted to see if the legend was real. The day the evaluation began, even the flight crews didn't know what to expect. The Gripen E looked modest compared to the giants they were used to. Not bulky, not intimidating, not shouting I cost a fortune. It stood there like the underdog in every sports movie ever made. Small. Calm. Almost unbothered by the competition. But the moment the engine spun up, the mood changed. There was a confidence in the way it rolled forward, a kind of controlled aggression, like a wolf that knew exactly what it could do. Once in the air, that confidence turned into shock. Canadian pilots immediately noticed how the jet responded, not like a machine following commands, but like a partner anticipating every move. It feels like it knows what I'm about to do, one pilot reportedly said. Gripen E didn't fight its pilot. It flowed with its pilot simple controls, clean displays, information that didn't overwhelm but empowered. No clutter. No chaos. Just clarity. Then came the maneuvers. High G turns, quick energy recovery, aggressive climbs, the kind of moves that separate real fighters from flying powerpoints. Grip and E danced through every one of them. No hesitation, no wasted momentum. It moved with the precision of a surgeon and the confidence of a street fighter. Critics had mocked it for being, you know, too light. But that lightness, that was its power. While heavier jets bled energy in tight turns, the Gripen E held on like it was glued to its own speed. The pilots weren't just impressed, they were confused. This wasn't what the textbook said, this wasn't what the critics said, this wasn't what common sense said, but reality doesn't care about predictions. Then came the part that really changed minds, the simulated engagements, no flashy stealth tricks, no secret features, just pure operational brain power. Gripe and ease sensors fused information seamlessly, painting a picture so clear pilots joked the jet was speaking human. Its electronic warfare suite, the heart of its survivability, didn't brag, didn't flash, didn't make noise, it just quietly dominated the fight. Targets were identified faster than expected. Situational awareness stayed stable, even in complex scenarios. Threats were countered instinctively. Again and again pilots came back with variations of the same reaction. This shouldn't be possible at this price. And that's where Sweden's genius showed itself. They didn't try to build the biggest jet, they built the smartest jet, one that could refuel in 10 minutes, rearm in 15, operate from remote roads, and survive first contact using its electronic brain instead of bulky stealth. Canada's pilots didn't need to be convinced by marketing, they saw it with their own eyes. Gripen E wasn't an alternative fighter, it was a fighter built for real pilots and real missions, not just perfect world scenarios. 
But the moment that sealed everything happened on a freezing day, the kind Canada knows better than anyone. Harsh winds, bitter cold, conditions where half the world's fighters would have politely asked to stay inside. Gripen E didn't care. It launched, it climbed, it maneuvered like the air was warm and welcoming. And when it landed on a rough strip, calm and effortless, pilots stopped pretending this was just another test. This jet makes hard missions feel easy. That was the line one Canadian pilot reportedly said. And, you know, that line traveled farther than any official report ever could. After the evaluations, whispers spread quietly across defense communities. Nothing public, nothing confirmed, just murmurs. Canada's pilots really liked the Grape and E, and that alone was enough to make strategists rethink their assumptions. If Canada, with its ice, its distances, its unforgiving skies, found the Grape and E impressive, then maybe the world had underestimated it. Again. Suddenly, countries that once dismissed it began taking notes. Brazil spoke up, Finland took a deeper look, even NATO planners started asking uncomfortable questions. If a lean, adaptable, relatively affordable fighter could compete with giants, what did that say about the future of air combat? Maybe the world didn't need more expensive jets, maybe it needed smarter ones. So, Canada didn't announce anything dramatic, its pilots didn't give emotional speeches, they didn't need to, their evaluations, their logs, their quiet nods, they said everything. The grip and E performed beyond expectations, not in theory, not in sales talk, but in the cold, punishing skies of Canada, where only truly capable fighters survive. What made the moment historic wasn't a deal, or a contract, or a political decision. It was something much simpler, the truth. The truth that brilliance doesn't need size. The truth that innovation doesn't require trillion-dollar programs. The truth that a small, Nordic country dared to challenge giants, and ended up impressing the very pilots who expected the least from it. And so the story ends where it began, on a cold Canadian runway, with a Swedish jet that wasn't supposed to win hearts, wasn't supposed to surprise anyone, and definitely wasn't supposed to influence global thinking, but it did. Because in a sky full of giants, sometimes the smallest fighter isn't the underdog at all. Sometimes it's the reminder that smart design beats expensive design.